<clears throat> okay, the Descent 2 begins right where the first one left off. So, a quick recap on the first one. <clears throat> a group of girls decide to go explore an uncharted cave system. One by one, they start being attacked by what they're referred to as crawlers. Think about if Gollum from Lord of the Rings was a much more vicious, much more cunning flesh eater. <clears throat> creatures, of course, have no, no sight, so they only, they, essentially they, they use sound or echolocation. So as they're essentially being killed off, like one by one, because they're constantly separated, that's what happens when you're in, you know, massive, unexplored, underground cave systems. It comes down to two of them, uh, Juno and Sarah. And they both kind of turn a little bit more native. What I mean by native, they essentially begin to hunt and kill some of the crawlers, so that way they can essentially try to find a way to survive. <clears throat> so in the first one, Sarah kind of turns on Juno and kind of leaves Juno to die so that way she can escape. Part two picks up with Juno as she is running out. And she, of course, runs into a truck. The truck takes her in. Cops trying to figure out what's going on. You know, she's the only survivor out of you know, this group of girls that went down there. She's covered in blood. And she's relatively catatonic. You know, she is literally just going through an absolutely nightmarish experience. They have a search party and they go, well, if it's an unexplored cave system, we have to take her with because we have no idea where we're going. So now you have a pseudo-catatonic person who just left an absolute unimaginable nightmare of, you know, trying to fight and claw to survive. You then put her back in the cave system. Try to hopefully find some of her friends. <clears throat> And they do find what's left of their friends. Of course, at first, no one believes her when she's seeing things. And very like in the first one, they get separated really fast. If you liked the first one, this is essentially the uh, some different characters going through a very similar scenario. You know, people are getting blocked off from one another. People are getting attacked one by one. People are having flashlights go out. You people who are trying to crawl the way through essentially really small, tight, confined spaces. And you also get to find out what happened to some of the previous people who went down there. So they do show quite a few in the way of dead bodies. <clears throat> and as they're making their way through it, Sarah teams up with uh, one of the deputies. So those are trying to work together to get out. She's then trying to let her know, if you make a sound, they're going to come and kill you. This is what you have to do to survive. The, the sheriff ends up getting saved by somebody. That somebody is Juno. Juno pretty much does not speak. Because if you speak, then you know they're going to come after you. If you make a noise, they're going to come after you. As long as you make no sound at all, you can survive in this sort of cave system. She does know a way to get out. And this noise will hop in and leave. Well, my climbing partner, you know, stuck an axe in my leg and took my lights. <clears throat> so they're getting picked off one by one. They do eventually end up making it to where they find out where the crawlers are, are bringing food in. And of course, friends, at the first one, you do have a survivor. And then what happens after that is equally is kind of, wow. And the woman they have who plays Sarah, I think it's Shauna McDonald does such a fantastic job. If they were to ever do a remake of Aliens or Alien, she would be a, a definite Ripley. You know, as she's going through, she goes from the catatonic, oh, I don't want to be in here. Everything's kind of making her skittish. Until she has a moment where she just, you know what? I'll have a choice. I'm going to have to choke, bite, scratch, claw. She takes a, uh, a like, repelling hook. <clears throat> and essentially use a kind of like brass knucks and beats one of the crawlers to death. And, the, and this one does everything we just saw in the first one. You know, you're going to see hands getting cut off, skulls getting crushed, you know, blood everywhere. <laughs> it pulls absolutely no punches. And all of a sudden I thought, man, you know what? I want to know what else this director has done. What else this production team has done. 
because filming in actual caves, you know, you get that really great sense of claustrophobia. You're in a, you're underground, so it takes out cell phones automatically. Lights always seem to go off for some strange reason. The water parts are done are done very well. There's only one complaint I actually have. I wish they would have had less ambient music, because the scenes where it's just a person breathing and it's echoing off the cave walls, it's a person looking back and forth, and you hear the the creatures like chittering in the distance. That's just just so unnerving, as opposed to hearing like the fairly generic like dun 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 dun, dun, dun you know the the kind of like pseudo being chased music. If they have gone away with that, and it's had to be almost entirely just raw ambient sounds as opposed to throwing in the, the background music. This one would have been slightly more intense. So they might have actually added that to reduce the intensity. Because otherwise you would be on edge pretty much this whole movie. So if you love the first one, you'll actually love the second. You can watch these two back to back. And it will make for a fantastic like three hour experience. And that is Descent 2.